Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm Seth. This is my husband, James. Yes. Just got my haircut by Julie. And this is Stars in the House. Yes. Oh, put on the little logo. Oh, yeah. Logo. Little, little logo. There, this there. is Stars in the <laughs> House. There it everyone is. Everyone gets it opposite. Okay. Opposite um, day. And it's to the who. Okay. So if you don't know what it is, we do it. Wow, the lighting never looked paler, and I'm, yet with a tinge of hold red. On, hold on, let's let's a lighting designer. Yo, Lindsay, we're gonna be like. Okay, I already ah. see laughing. You know what? No, I, oh, ah. <laughs> you know what? I'm not. Okay, oh. where was I? I don't want to hear the sass, the sisyphus. By the way, I feel like that could be the set design of All Rise. It looks very familiar. We watched your episode, Ms. Mendez. Yes, it was wonderful. We'll talk about it later. You were wonderful. Talk about it privately. Yeah, that's hold right. On. I'm just going to leave this picture up, and that'll just be me the whole broadcast. It is the state of shock. Yeah, hold on. This will be. <laughs> okay, you guys. Get me out of here. Okay. <laughs> Next time, don't make comments. Oh, my gosh. Point has never been paler with a tinge of red. It's literally, uh, um, there's a, what is it? Wait, wait, what's that song? In the velvet darkness of the blackest night, burning bright. Lily Frankenstein monster. My point is, this is starts. It doesn't house. matter because this is all for the actors' fun, Seth. It doesn't matter that we look pale, that the lighting is horrific, <laughs> <laughs> that we're late. Yeah, what is that? We're not prepared. Are... It doesn't no, matter. I don't even know who pays second pot. <laughs> I will find out during the show. All right, what is the actors' fun? Oh my gosh. Oh, you're asking yeah, me? Yeah, it wasn't rhetorical. It wasn't? Well, I can tell you what it is not, which is that it is not just for actors. No. And I don't mean just for actors and disrespectful to actors, but the reality is the Actors Fund was founded 138 years ago when the only people who had anything to do with the performing arts or, you know, were called actors. Yeah, no matter what you did. There wasn't TV, there wasn't film, there wasn't the music industry as we know it at all. They were actors. If you worked on stage behind the scenes, how did I find that out? Because B.B. Newarth was one of our first yes. guests. B.B. Newarth. And she set us straight in that way. That's right. Anyway, yeah. So, and she uh, said, yeah. that's what I'm... Um, so basically, the Actors Fund is for everybody. From New York, literally all around the country, no matter what you do, you can get help in the Actors Fund. You literally just go to actorsfund.org. It is that I simple. need help paying rent, paying my medical bills, paying my health insurance premium. Because most actors work um, check to check, and then suddenly all checks stopped, and people are like, ah, uh, the rent is still due. So you go to yeah. actorsfund.org, you can ask for money. However, if you have some money to spare, perhaps you're on a CBS hit show that was the only one that actually had a new episode this <laughs> That's week. That's right. Then perhaps you can, you can go to, I'm giving a for instance. I'm giving a for instance. for instance. And I'm getting applause from Justin. Thank you. <laughs> My point is, you Lindsay, can go when you're the only actress of a you know that's working out of anyone who's been on this friggin' show in the last two months, you're gonna get busted. You're gonna get busticated. Come on, now then. And you're those, literally the only person who's worked on a scripted show yeah, in and the all, last two. By months. way, all that eye rolling I saw last night. <laughs> they obviously cast you. Signature. <laughs> they cast you based on your annoyance. <laughs> Just a lot of like. Where was I? Anyway, she's very good at it. <laughs> I've had it. You guys, you have to go to. You I hope to, she negotiates a big raise for the next season of All Rise. Yeah, actually, you're, you're amazing. So is Ruthie. Really, the really point is, amazing. please go to startsinthehouse.com to donate. Once you donate, you're going to get a receipt. Forward that. Forward that receipt. Don't take a screenshot. Forward it to Stars in the House 2020 at Gmail, and then one of our many amazing stars that are performing here tonight will hopefully read your name. And Lindsay promises to literally read it all in a high E <laughs> with vibrato. <laughs> So starsnouse.com, forward it. Stars in the house, oh my gosh. Gmail. But you know what? We do have some donations and shout outs for people who gave early. Well, by the way, before I read these, um, we want to thank Andrea Burns. Andrea, oh my God. Our guest host for this afternoon at two o'clock. She was wonderful. With her was, guest star, Manny Gonzalez. Right. And Dr. LaPook having a special section to, to talk about how you deal with cancer treatment in the midst of a pandemic. I mean, um, it was, it was a great show. Thank you, Andrea, for doing that. And we look, she's going to be doing next Monday's. Doing? Why liquid you? Yeah, she's going to no. be doing next Monday. She's going to be doing she's next gonna Monday. She's going to be the guest host for next Monday. The hell? Shut up, Seth. You know what? <laughs> Lindsay's going to be, she was so good in All Rise. Yeah. It's going to be without you. And it's going to be a, a split screen of Lindsay co hosting and me co hosting. That's what's going to happen. See? That's right. Okay. My dreams have come true. Wow. <laughs> My living nightmare. <laughs> Anywho. Uh, but we did want to give some shout outs because the donations, Seth and I continue to be amazed. So this is just a few of the donations 
that came in at the end of actually last night's show. Um, we want to thank Nicole from Florida, who gave $5. Arthur from California, $25. Drew from Arizona, $25. Bert, Bert how do you pronounce that, Seth? Bertold. Thank Bertold, you. I love that name. From Rhode Island, $25. Greg, with two Gs from Maryland, $25. Uh, Hinda from Massachusetts, $100. Kara Lee, I think I know which Kara Lee that is. Kara Lee from C. New Jersey. <laughs> yes, ma'am. $250. In the mass? Wow. How could you donate in the mass? I know it. And Amy from Colorado, $500. Thank you, Ames. Oh, that's so nice. By the way, look who's trying to get attention. Wow. Chrissy, we have all the dogs are out. God knows what's going to happen. Anyway, it does. That's right. It does head up. And we are up to a total of. Yes. $268,250 raised for the Actors Fund. Stars in the house. Thank you, everyone, for donating. That is our show. We will be back to a lot. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Okay, so uh, this is an exciting show. We have two amazing. And by the way, let's stop. Thank Blake Ross for putting all this together. Blake, because we didn't do a damn thing, but show up at places. Yeah, people are like you guys must be exhausted. Like we have like a whole team of people helping us yes. out volunteering. So thanks, so thank everybody. You, Blake. Yeah, Blake right. did all this work. So we have this great um, team. I'm gonna say composing team. Is that what you say? Is a composer lyricist writing team? I guess you can ask them. So. I guess we'll find out what they are. Uh, please welcome the lovely. Pasik and Paul. Hey. hey guys. Hello. Justin, you're not at the age yet where the camera has to be that high. That's the <laughs> ball. Age. <laughs> what the hell? Wait, is this wait, this is this is even more the same, right? This is like this is my desktop computers. I mean I can like, you know, I can I can I can meet it here, but otherwise it's gonna well, be a, it's a high angle. It's a trick that people do. Look, I'm not hating that angle, so don't don't call me out here. Get back to me. So is it composing <laughs> team? Like, what do you call it? Yeah. Songwriting team? What's the best phrase? Yeah. Um, whatever you guys want to call us, we'll, we'll be yes. called. We're happy yeah. with, you know, however you guys refer to us with affection, we're happy about it. Okay. Thank you. Now, by the way, everyone that's watching right now, starsinhouse.com, then forward that receipt. So the first thing I want, to, I want you guys to talk about, because I always tell the story on SiriusXM, Please talk about because we just had the reunion. Speaking of Carol Lee of City of Angels. Oh right. We just had the City of Angels reunion right. two days ago. Amazing. So please talk about City of Angels and how the two, of you, how the lack of talent of both of you contributed <laughs> to all these Tony Awards. Go. Well, it is a true story. Um, without David Zippel and Cy Coleman, we would not be uh, a songwriting or composing or whatever you want to call us team. We basically we met in college and we started uh, writing songs together. And we were, you know, actor singers and terrible dancers. <laughs> and we became friends because we were the worst people in our ballet class. And we would kind of like have to make each other feel better about it. Justin, you want to kind of tell them? Oh yeah, no, no, yeah. Well, it's just like they were, they were like saying all these. Continue while I get the dogs. We got a dog. Yeah. Um, but they, they, they were, um, they were like saying all these like French terms to us, and we were like, we don't understand what these things like. Pas de chap, de jam, like all these French things where like we don't understand what this means. And they'd be like, um, like the worst part of the class was obviously when like they were like, okay, you know across the floors, you know across the floors, right? So across the floors, like Seth one knows year, across, Seth the floors, knows across the floor. So this is one at a time. Everyone in the class has it's like we're freshmen in college, we've never danced before in our lives. Wait, and they're wait, like, wait, okay, wait, 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 hold on. This is like when people go on the amazing race and they're like, I don't know how to swim. Why are you theater majors and you've never danced in your life? You're now, by the way, over 18, you're adults. Why did you not think before college? Maybe we should learn how to dance. We're majoring in musical theater. Uh, Go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought I thought that was where you learn. I thought it was like when you go to college, then you'll learn to dance. We show up day one and we're like in baggy sweatpants. Everyone's in like these tights. They're like looking fit. We're like, what's happening here? Everyone like knew how to dance already. This is like, now you really become pro. And we're like, we we don't know any of these things. So they're like doing these across the floors one at a time. Like we can't, this is a harrowing experience. Literally one person at a time across the entire ballet floor. They're going like, do this. Like th like they, they go through the whole French thing. We're like, we don't know what that means. Like we're like, this is, we're, we're like doing like, um like run a little bit, run a little bit, jump, jump, jump. Run a little bit, run a little bit, jump. Like we're like, I don't, they're saying all these things were like, all we're hearing is just sometimes you randomly leap in the air as you're going across the floor. We would like hide behind other people. It's like actually traumatic as I look back on it. Um, um, but it, it drove us into our first level of disappointment, which was, okay, we're not gonna be dancers. 
uh, not triple threats, right? <laughs> so now we're looking at like a double threat situation. Sophomore like year rolls solid, around. A solid double threat. We're like, if we can get out of college with just being double threats, a little bit threatening, we're fine, you know? Fine. So <laughs> sophomore year rolls around. Sophomore year. And, and the spring production is City of Angels. And we're thinking, okay, this is our moment. What's a perfect show for a non-dancer? City of Angels, City of right? Angels. right? Right, absolutely right. It's literally, it's just singing amazingly well, posing, walking on <laughs> the stage. It's literally for people that can barely walk. Excellent, go. So that's the point. And so we're like, okay, this is gonna be our moment because we're clearly terrible dancers, but maybe we can pose and you know, phonate kind of on pitch. So we auditioned for City of Angels. We're ready for our big moment. We're ready to be cast in you know, the musical. And um, and the cast list comes out, and I am cast as man with camera, and Justin is cast as Harlan Yamato, the Asian backup dancer slash coroner. And so that means that in a two and a half hour musical, my job was to just go on to the stage and take a photo and then leave the stage, and that was the part that I got. Welcome back, Justin. <laughs> I couldn't. I was. It was too dramatic, dramatic for me. <laughs> So, but Justin, you did wind up managing to be cast as a dancer for all of your. Yeah, but it was like you know what it, it was like. Backup as you're dancer, in last time, it was, coroner. I was a coroner. I went on stage and I was like, I don't know if I had a line or I just rolled the body on stage, and then I had to dance with the gurney. But yeah. like, it was not featured. It was. I thought I was gonna at least do the quartet. Like, right. hello, I'm the music person. Not even that. Okay, so so we don't get cast in good roles in this show, and so we were like. Basically, I think that sort of convinced us that we would never make it. Hold as on, performers. Benj, please tell everybody what the director said to show the import of every role. Oh yeah, yeah, right. I love, I, I love that you remember this. So the first day of rehearsal, we are all gathered around, and he's like, you know, every every part in City of Angels matters. You know, everybody is vital to the experience. And then he looks directly at me, and he goes, "Even the man with camera." And that was the moment that I knew at all and I was pretty worthless and we had been demoted from triple to double to single to not threatening in any way shape or form yeah, no and threat. so we were like okay if we're gonna if we're, if we're gonna be cast in these terrible roles in City of Angels then why don't we actually just write our own show instead and we'll take all of the other rejects and all of the people that didn't get cast and we'll make our own thing and so we decided, okay, now we're gonna be a songwriting team and we're gonna show the world that, you know, we're the City of Angels rejects and we're gonna get the other people who felt bad about their parts and we put on a show, Seth, as one does. And that was the first show that we ever wrote. And we just wrote it like at all hours of the morning, you know, between like 9 p.m. after, you know, classes and homework and all that and like 3 a.m. We didn't even write sheet music at the time. We would literally just have lyric sheets and just arrows that pointed up and arrows pointing down. So like go up with the notes and, and go down up, with the notes. And, we'd never, and it goes down. And because we had never done this before. And so then we staged our song cycle, which was very trendy at the time. And you know, we were obsessed with like closer than ever and songs for a new world. We were like, we're gonna do our own. Um, and we did it at this 99 seat theater in Ann Arbor, Michigan, with all of our City of Angels rejects in the cast, and we put on our first show, and that was including, our sophomore year including, of college. Including Broadway's Chelsea Cronbach, Broadway's Whitney Basher, Broadway's Nick Blameyer. Yeah, Whitney. Nick Ardell, too. I love all those two people. Second of all, I just want all the young people out there to notice that instead of you guys just standing in the back of rehearsal and constantly dishing everybody else on stage, you spent your time creatively, and that's, right. and that's what I applaud. Thank you, Seth. Um, but honestly, it was just to save ourselves from embarrassment. Yeah, it was out of desperation. Let's be honest. Yeah. Not it that was, inspiring. It was still a positive yeah. ending. Yeah. Um, okay, so hold on. We have so many performers with you. So I, I feel, I mean, should we begin we're with- in, we're, yeah, yeah, we're insecure and we needed people yeah, we to, have to, to have come help us. us. <laughs> should we begin with Ben, who has what I call a Jufro? Because I'm looking at him right now. Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> Ben, Ben, beautiful. This is what I like to call quarantine hair, BB. <laughs> I, think, I think we're all getting used to it. Justin, you look pretty um, like snatched though with the hair, so. Yeah, yeah I've, been, I, I've been getting the, I mean, my, my wife has been getting with the clippers and just like going crazy. Okay. I like, I it's great actually. Like now I have in-home haircuts, like I'm never going back. Well, that's not true, I am going back, but like, it's great. It's like, what else am I, it's like a nervous habit now. It's like, I feel awkward. I feel like I'm not doing anything productive. Let's cut the hair. Absolutely, right. And I think um, I don't have those resources. 
<laughs> Unless I want to just sort of go in with shears on my own. And I don't think that's the best idea. But anyway, hi. Hi, Ben. Hi. How are you? Good. Okay, so hold on for one second, bio, just on a side note, I call it a Jufro. BB New Earth introduced me to the term Isro. Just wanted to. Whoa. Never heard okay. of it before. Now, by the wow. way, people are watching right now and they're like, what's happening? Who is right. everybody? Passing and Paul said so they wrote, um, I want to say Peace of the Vein. What the hell was that first show called? <laughs> Ed just, Ed wait, did. I'm sorry. What What did you just say, Seth? Well, what did you make up? I went from pieces to pieces of eight. <laughs> pieces of eight. So it was edges. Pieces of eight. I mean, so, could have been. Why not? Yeah, exactly. Super, super specific. I mean, they wrote edges. They wrote pieces of eight. <laughs> they wrote <laughs> Christmas story. They wrote. Make up another one real fast. Um, they wrote. <laughs> no, they wrote dog fight. They wrote Dear Evan Goldberg, the Jewish version, <laughs> yes. and the Goyesha version. Um, lyrics to La La Land. Um, what's that beautiful uh, James and the Giant Peach? Right, you played with that beautiful yeah. song. Um, and they just had a big um, Jewish seder led by Benj. The point is, they like won every award and done every single show. Right. So Ben, what's your connection to these two clowns? I um, was the Evan Hansen on the first national tour for year one of the. Uh, National tour of Dear Van Hansen. Um, <laughs> and before that, I was in the Broadway company um, for like eight months as an understudy covering the three young boys. Um, and uh, then they plucked me out of that and put me in the tour. And uh, the rest is history. Just kidding. Her story. Um, is her story. Thank you. Uh, now, what was the most fun role to play? Because is it fun to be constantly like, depressed and kind of bully, but then like get a love interest, or is it fun to be the bully, or is it fun to be the asshole who's making jokes? Like what's the most fun part? Um, <laughs> I mean like being an understudy for me was, it was my first professional job and I was pretty much like thrown off the deep end. Like I had just finished freshman year at Carnegie Mellon and like had no idea why I was just um, put in this literal Broadway hit musical. Um, so I was just like happy to be there, like ready to do whatever they wanted me to do. Um, He's changed so much. He's changed so much. Yeah, I'm just like bitter, callous, uh, <laughs> old hag. No, um, I, I mean, all three of the roles are like it, it's like it was such a joy to understudy in that show because all of them were like such fully formed, like beautiful characters, and um, so it was kind of just a dream. And then I, I mean, you know, I sort of have like just the connection with Evan the most because that was that was who I was for a year. Um, mm -hmm. so that's probably where my heart lies. And what about, well, actually two things I wanted to say, you guys have like yet again, not since Lind Lindsay Mendez having a new TV show, you have like a new product that just came out. What just came out? Like the book of Pasek and Paul, what's happening? What is it called and where is it? <laughs> oh my what God. Is? What is <laughs> <laughs> By the you know, way, this is this is its own show. You do realize it's just Mendez just coming in from yeah. time to time. Like this is just if you want to oh run with God. it, run we with know it. what we've got. We she's, yeah. you know, she's like uh, the old the old Muppets. You know the two old guys. <laughs> the Muppets. Exactly, love that. exactly. <laughs> Judging from the balcony. <laughs> Go on. Disapproval. Love our Lindsay. Oh my Go God. On. What's the where? No, is the so yeah, there's there's this book that was actually supposed to come out um, the Monday after everything sort of got shut down, um, and it is a, uh, a it book. came out, it came out, it, we it just, came out. Yeah, I guess we just kind of like we were, we were gonna supposed have a big to do a book tour and stuff. Yeah, and a, yeah, promotional event or whatever. But it's basically it's uh it's the lyrics to the song "You Will Be Found," and there's these beautiful illustrations that are made. Oh, Justin has a copy, and this amazing artist Sarah J. Coleman did this beautiful um, poetic interpretation of the of the lyrics, and it's it's really beautiful. So it, you know, we kind of made it because people used the song to kind of connect with others who kind of felt alone and then felt mm -hmm. like their experience was um, where they were isolated and they needed to find community. And so the book became a physical manifestation of what the song and the show was able to do and kind of a token and a reminder for anybody who kind of feels like they don't have their tribe or they don't have somebody who is, you know, looking out for them. It's a reminder that you're not ever alone and that you have people that love you. And how do we get this book? Now it's a pandemic. We have to actually come to your house. What do we do? <laughs> you have to, you yeah, have to yeah. come to Justin. You have to yeah, go to yeah, I've got to go. Yeah, no, no, you can order it everywhere. I mean, we we are are you know we were looking forward to getting to talking with people and sharing it with people. But 
you know, I, ironically, like it felt like, okay, this is the worst time to have this come out, whatever, but we've realized that it's actually, if people can get their hands on it, it's a great time for it because it is a message oh, about when you're feeling present. alone, when you're, yeah, when you're feeling alone, what did you say? It's a gorgeous Mother's Day present. Mother's Whoa. Day. There we go. Yeah, and 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 it's a, it's you know something to to hold on to during this time where we're all on our own and wanting to feel connected to people. Um, okay, A, I say brava. B, Ben, I noticed you're in your kitchen. I I want any cooking, but I'm <laughs> I'm curious what's happening musically because I feel I didn't do any sound checks with you. Are you giving me a song at all? I am giving you a song. It's just this little sort of like indie. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, it's like early Benj and Justin. Just kidding, it's waving through a window. I'm, I'm, <laughs> um, I'm aware of its work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a deconstruction <laughs> of it. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, wait, so great. Okay, so um, by the way, Benj and Justin, what was like, when you were writing the song, was one of the songs like, it just totally flowed out of us. Or you were like, waving through a doorway, I don't know the lyric is. You know, a lot of the songs uh, we did not come right away. And Evan, and the opening for Evan Hansen, probably we did like five different versions of an opening yeah. number before we got to this one. But then when we actually came up with the concept and what we wanted to write, we wrote it relatively quickly. Um, Cause it finally, it was the song that kind of unlocked the rest of the score for us. It was the first yeah. one that was in that style. And then everything else from After there After we wrote flowed. this, we trashed everything that we written before and wrote all yeah. new songs. Cause we are like, yeah. oh, this is what it should be. Well, yeah. yeah. Do you know about like Lily Fiddler and Chorus Line? Are you guys like those kind of historians? Anybody? Yeah, anybody? yeah. Because Come on. Chorus Line literally, they wrote the whole show. The opening was called Resume. And then after they wrote the show, they're like, turns out the show is about like desperately needing a job. And that's when they right. wrote, people get it. And then yep. they were all at Fiddler and they were like, it's about tradition. We never knew it. And then they wrote, so it's interesting. It's like, Exactly. Like write the show and then write the opening number and then write the show again. Right. Yeah. yeah we just like didn't get it at all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and who was the mean person that was like, I'll make the high note a B flat. That's easy for anybody to sing. <laughs> who thought of that? You know what? It wasn't actually it wasn't actually originally a high note. It ended kind of like sort of down and and then in rehearsals with Ben Platt, um that it came out of like actual it's Ben's fault. It's Ben Platt's fault. Because like we were like, we were, like the ending of the song is like not landing. We're like, well, we like Ben could just belt really high. No, I mean, he was motivated by character, but it was like he needs motivated to like, by character. This, sure, sure, sure. He needs to let this like outcry happen, right? And we were like, and we, I actually was like, Ben, I this is what I would want to do, but like, I don't know if I don't want to put, and he was like, let me try it. And the rest is history. Wait, the Eddie wasn't landing. What is it like? I'm not that girl. <laughs> that was the Eddie. Yeah, it was like, is anybody waving back at me? Look at me. Yeah. yeah. It, it was like we couldn't know how to end it. Yeah. And so tonight yeah. I'll be performing the original version. The original. <laughs> <laughs> I'll kill you. Yeah. Um, all right, Ben, On I can't wait note. to hear it. Yeah. We're gonna get off screen and just be an audience. Is that was like, okay. I'm gonna hook up my speaker right now. Oh, good. Now's the time to take five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we literally had the entire show. You have to hook it into your microwave. All right, I'm oh, out. I'm I'm Justin, I'm here or just you? Yeah, do you want the two people that created it glaring at you and judging? Because oh, you got wow. it. Yeah, 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 which one you want? Yourself. Get us off the screen. Uh, <laughs> this, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just Justin. Oh, no. Okay, so it's just me. Okay, let's do it. Hi, babe. <laughs> it's actually both of us. Okay, perfect. You're going to do <laughs> Before I even turn the key, before I make the mistake, before I lead with the worst of me, give them no reason to stare, no slipping up if you slip away, so I got nothing to share. No, I got nothing to say. Step out, step out of the sun if you keep getting burned. Step out, step out of the sun because you've learned, because you've learned. On the outside, always looking in, will I ever be more than I've always been? Because I'm tap, tap, tapping on the glass. Waving through window, I 
Try to speak, but nobody can hear, so I wait around for an answer to appear. Oh, I'm watch, watch, watching people pass. Waving through the window. Can anybody see? Is anybody waving back at me? We start with stars in our eyes. We start believing that we belong, but every sun doesn't rise. And no one tells you where you went wrong. Step out, step out of the sun if you keep getting burned. Step out, step out of the sun because you learn, because you learned. On the outside, always looking in, will I ever be more than I've always been? Because I'm tap, tap, tapping on the glass, waving through the window. I try to speak, but nobody can hear, so I wait around for an answer to appear. All I'm watch, watch, watching people pass. Waving through window. Can anybody see? Is anybody waving? When you're falling in a forest and there's nobody around, do you ever really crash or even make a sound? When you're falling in a forest and there's nobody around, do you ever really crash or even make a sound? When you're falling in a forest and there's nobody around, do you ever really crash or even make a sound? When you're falling in a forest and there's nobody around, do you ever really crash or even make a sound? Did I even make a sound? Did I even make a sound? It's like I never made a sound. Will I ever make a sound? On the outside, always looking in, will I ever be more than I've always been? Cause I'm tap, tap, tapping on the glass, waving through the window. I try to speak, but nobody can hear, so I wait around for an answer to appear. All I'm watch, watch, watching people pass, waving through the window. Can anybody see? Is anybody waving back at me? Is anybody waving? 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 Whoa! Whoa! I get it. You're amazing. Oh, shush. Oh, my God. Man, I love your voice. I love your extra room. The talent. The talent. The talent. We wouldn't have it without you. That was so good. Okay, so unfortunately, we have a million guests, but Ben, we totally want you to come back on your own without these two clowns crowding you. (laughs) Agreed. Agreed. You're amazing. He's amazing. Love you all. The vibrato. You? Yeah, you still got it. Give, okay. cut. give Taylor our love. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna bring back. I'm gonna bring on one of your other um, muses who has a young baby. So I'm gonna so bring him on right he's now. He's got a couple of minutes, and he's sharing them with us now. Yeah, now he's here with his character name. That's right, Senor Newsy. No, Jimmy Collins. <laughs> Jimmy, join him. Jimmy, focus. Jimmy, Jimmy Collins. I was shamelessly practicing over here. You don't know the damn song. Uh. I do have the lyrics here, but yes, I do know it. It's been a while. We recorded this in 2012. By the way, um, Jeremy was on the show with Ashley a couple weeks ago, and they were amazing oh together. Gosh. Oh, my God. They were so good. How's it going? I mean, we haven't seen you since the beginning of this whole thing, Jeremy. How are you doing? I know. I'm pretty good. You guys are still doing it every day, aren't you? Twice you a day. are amazing. We had, we had a guest, we had a host, guest today. host today. We had a guest host today. But yeah, twice a day. We're, we're slacking off. I'm very proud of you, and and so and so happy to call you my my uh, my pals. And Benj and Justin, how you guys doing? Hi, how are you? What's Good. up, Jeremy, Good. Jimmy Collins? How are you, man? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I figured this is my second appearance, I might as well flare it up a bit. And yeah, I'm wearing one of you got um his costume pieces. I love that. That I stole. Wow. So what? I don't even know what songs anyone's performing. I wasn't part of any sound check. So <laughs> is this like part of Smash? Is this a Smash song? I think so because he's not turning light on. You're welcome. Are you giving you're giving us a little bit of smash, right, Jimmy Collins? Uh, yeah, I'm giving you a little smash. You know, because uh, you know Benj and Justin, my 
uh, as I'm sure many people know, uh, uh, wrote a bunch of songs for Smash. And um, I got to sing one of them, but it was a duet. And uh, uh, that was Rewrite the Story. <laughs> Couldn't do that one. That's all right. They they rewrote that song later for another thing. And then- That's uh, true. That's, that's and, true. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and then, um, but, uh, but yeah, my character in the show actually wrote this song and I've performed it before, so. Um, um, do you remember them playing it for you for the first time? Are you like, this song's amazing? You're like, oh my God, it's too high for me. Any comments? <laughs> Well, Catherine McPhee actually sung this song first. Well, I sang a little snippet of it. And actually, when I did sing it um, on the day, we did it live. And um, and I had completely lost my voice. And so I did like this crazy falsetto-y kind of airy version, which ended up sounding cool. And I can never actually do it like that again, because it was only through pure like vocal fatigue <laughs> nodes that I squeaked it out. Um, but no, I, I performed this before like in, in concerts. So... Uh, uh, but no, I, I loved it. And I'd I known them um, from, uh, we'd actually met doing a very, very early uh, version of Dogfight. Jeremy was in yeah, a, a, like, an early reading of Dogfight and, and crushed it. I remember, but um, the I don't want to say, but the, I don't want to say, but the leading lady demanded that he be fired. And I just thought <laughs> that was uncalled for. Oh it's fine. Um, oh my God. <laughs> so good. I I you can just. Crapping on Lindsay this whole time. I got stuck. <laughs> Believe me, she knows how to ditch it back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was on. By the way, don't Come forget, Pasek and Paul book, perfect for Mother's Day. You will be <laughs> on. All right, Jeremy, I can't wait to hear you. Okay, um, lay it on us. Yes. All right, okay. So this is um, this is Caught in the Storm from Smash. I don't think it's from anything else. You guys wrote it for the show, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, so you wrote it for the show. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's about it's about being caught in the storm, metaphorically and not. You know, yeah, it's true. Wait, are you? Can I start it? You can start, <laughs> please. Here we go. Wait, 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 wait. Now we're done. Thank you. You can push me away, I can take it I can make you a promise and break it We know the way this goes by now Running off just to see if I chase you I pretend I know how to replace you Still we get tangled up somehow hear it thunder and I wonder how long can I hang on I'm caught in the storm caught in the rain caught in the rush that hides this pain I'm ready to drown it's coming down, but I feel so alive. Just let me go, just walk away. If you love someone, you never let them stay. Caught in the storm. As the bars on the Bowery are closing You arrive at the door standing frozen You say you thought you'd find me here Tell me how I begin to forget you When you keep coming back and I let you Love me until you disappear I'm caught in the storm, I'm caught in the rain, caught in the rush that hides this pain. I'm ready to drown, it's coming down, but I feel so alive. Just let me go, just walk away. If you love someone, you never let them stay. 
caught in the storm let me wash away you can find me after the flood let me wash away I'm caught in the storm I'm caught in the rain caught in the rush that hides its pain if you love someone you find a way to stay in the storm mm -hmm. yes is it, is it raining in here or is it just me Typical. you are caught in the storm i am and so that's so that's so crazy. You know, it's funny when we first wrote that song, we wrote it for the character of Jimmy Collins because all that we knew was that the character was supposed to be addicted to drugs. And so the idea of caught in the storm was like about like an addiction cycle. So that's all that we knew. And then we wrote that song and then it became a song for Cat McPhee and then for you now full circle. I love it. Thanks. Just sound amazing. That's amazing. amazing. I had a I test behind for writing it. It was definitely one of the one of the highlights of our of our hit list show within a show, and uh, oh it was gosh. just so great that you guys were, you know, a part of that, and that I felt like I knew some of the people, and that we were like bringing up these new, um, you know, composers that people didn't really know back then. People didn't know you guys. It was it was really it was it was our first TV job. It was our, yeah. it was like huge deal for us. So for and yeah. also to have like Jeremy and Cat singing our songs, you know, it was like that was a yeah. big deal. So didn't you did you have a third one? Yeah, we did original. Remember that song? Original. Yeah. original. She wants, she wants to be original. Yep. Yeah, exactly. A little bop, a little bop for you. A little bop, a big bop. You know, boy. <laughs> I was also on Smash. You, you didn't write me a song, so. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay was on so Smash. She I remember Lindsay being on Smash. Yeah, she, was. she killed it. She just like showed up one day and was like in a in like Ripley Greer and just sang a massive song and then was like, "Bye, bitches." It was, it was just like it was just documentary footage. They just. <laughs> <laughs> I played myself. <laughs> that's the goal. That's goals, Lindsay. That's really yeah, you guys didn't write me a song either for that. Hey. So sorry. Sorry. You don't sound sorry. All right. In conclusion, Jeremy, go to your lovely, lovely <clears throat> child. So is adorable. Like, oh, she is? Oh. But I'll go and just watch her. Like stand yeah. over her. <laughs> and just stare at her. That's right. Literally watch her. Thank that's you. That's what you do, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Right. That's, that's, that's a thing. <laughs> uh, we're going to bring on the doctor. Unless you have any medical questions, we're going to bring on Dr. John LaPook to give us a little medical update. Now, by the way, all the crazy Smash fans on the side, don't go, why is your medical update? That is the format of the show that we keep you <laughs> up to date. So I don't want to see any. Bring back Jeremy. Why is Jeremy talking? No, this is why good. Is we need this. We need this. This is good. Thank you, yeah. Justin. I can't take the <laughs> Bye, Jeremy. Bye, Jeremy. We love you. Bye, guys. Thanks Bye, for Jeremy. having me. Bye, thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. So here we go with some medical updates. The chief medical correspondent from CBS and stars in the house, Dr. John LaPook. Thank you very much. So the first song I'm going to sing. It's a little <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> now that's not cool. <laughs> what? Um, anyway, there's lots going on. I'm preparing a piece that's going to be on CBS this morning on Thursday. You you guys always hear it first. I interviewed the person in charge of Johnson & Johnson, J&J's vaccine effort. Wow, is this full court press with them? They, they are just beefing up using um, something that's been tried for Zika and it's been tried for Ebola. What, ironically, what happened with those is that by the time they got the, the vaccine up and running, the, the outbreak kind of yeah. you know, fell off. And so um, there wasn't a chance to really test it widely. This time, I think there's going to be a chance to test it widely. So Zika was a virus? I thought it was bacterial. Zika was a virus? It's a virus, yeah. It was a virus, mosquito-borne virus. Um, but you know there are about 100 vaccine efforts around the world right now? Um, a lot of wow. We were just it's talking incredible. about that earlier today. That it's going yeah. to be quicker, I think, than most vaccines normally take because there's so many people working on it. it. It's totally quicker to make the vaccine, but what you have the asterisk here I always talk about is 
by the time you do the safety testing and you and cannot then, just go through the safety yeah. testing, there's a reason for the safety testing. Yeah. Uh, there are reasons for speed bump. Uh, so you don't run into trouble with uh, side effects that you didn't expect. You know, it's, it's so humbling, all this medicine stuff and science stuff, and you can't just say, oh, I know it's going to work. Let's give it to a million people. You got to really do, there's a reason for the FDA. There's a reason for all this stuff. But uh, even once it's out, let's say in a year, by the time you roll it out to people and somebody smart, I wish I had come up with this, but it's a great, great line, which is this pandemic is not going to be over for anybody until it's over for everybody. Mm -hmm. This is a worldwide thing. And it can't just be we're going to have a race, we're going to have a food fight to get us immunized in, in uh, America and forget about Africa, parts right. of the world, afford, because it's going to come back to bite us again anyway. Uh, and lots of questions about immunity. Uh, how long will people be immune with the vaccine? How long are people immune when they get infected? Right. So um, it's called the no it's not called the novel coronavirus for nothing. It's a new coronavirus. Well, that's what we're wondering. You know, our daughter was asking us like, because now younger people are getting it. Is the virus like mutating or is it just random? Okay, it's not. That's these, right. these viruses, RNA viruses, always mutate. They, that's what they do. They but are. mutate is like mutant. You know. It, it, they can. It, the question is, are they changing in a way that makes it deadlier or more contagious? And there's no evidence yet that that's true. There was an article from Los Alamos saying that there was a change. Yeah. Was, we, we, that, yeah. you know, we, you, you can't jump. One of the problems with all of this literature, it's like drinking from a fire hydrant, and they're not peer reviewed yet. A lot of them. There's actually a journal website of non peer reviewed, and again, there's a reason for peer review. So people are getting this information quickly. I think um, so far. Uh, we did a story on the evening news tonight about this new um, Kawasaki-like syndrome where kids, and it's only like 15 kids here. You so rare, rare, rare. I don't want people freaking out about kids. It's still very unusual for kids uh, to get serious illness from COVID-19. But mm. we're seeing this inflammatory reaction throughout the body. Kawasaki mm. disease is usually after a virus. Young kids, they get a uh, like a strawberry tongue. They can get a rash. They can get a swollen hands, they can even, as in serious cases, have a problem with the vessels that supply the heart. Um, it's all probably related to this huge inflammatory reaction that your body overreacts to. You get the virus, and the virus tries to kill, uh, the immune system tries to kill the virus, but in doing so, it goes overboard and it's friendly fire, it ends up blowing up your cell. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why, anyway, th there's lots, lots to talk about, lots to, um, Lots to be excited about in terms of new medications, but that's where we are today. Okay. All right. Well, to sum it up, yes. we agree with BP, who says, Dr. Lapi, you are our guru. Or this one right here. I'm getting up at 5 in the morning, 4.30 in the morning, because get, I'm going to be on, for those of you in New Zealand, <laughs> I am going to be on in New Zealand tomorrow. Uh, whenever the equivalent of 5.30 in the morning here, it's probably 9.30 at night there. No, I think and it's 5.30... PM. I think it's 12 hours. Yeah, regardless. You'll be yeah. Something like that. But yeah. um, love their prime minister, of course, uh, uh, Jacinda Ardern, who declared the Easter Bunny and the Tooth Fairy essential workers. <laughs> I love that. I Amazing. love that. Bye, Bye, Bye Dr. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank He's you. He's Bye. the best. All right, so we're so excited. Well, I don't know if she's there. So, RB Jones, you here because your camera's blocked. So I can't. There hey, she is. We have not seen this lady in so long. We're so excited to bring Yay. on the lovely Rachel Bay Jones. Yay. Hi, 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 Mama. Hi, Mama. Hi, Mama. Hi, Mama. Is that a Zoom background or is yeah. that real? It's the stunning. Oh, it's background. real. It's real. I didn't want you to see my dirty house, so I'm outside. <laughs> Where are you? It's so beautiful. It's um, it's I'm in California. It's oh, my backyard. Yeah. <clears throat> so nice. We haven't seen you in so long. How's it going, Rach? I wanted to give you guys a little greenery. Yeah. <laughs> it's, so lovely. it's also um, it's Cinco de Mayo and Miranda's in the house making tacos for Taco Tuesday. So excellent. So Very fitting. Very fitting. <laughs> Benj and just I was obsessed with Rachel when I saw her in. Uh, <laughs> Did you see her in that and be like, thank you? Turns out you can dance. Did you see her in that and say, <laughs> cast her, go? What happened? We were obsessed with her. We were, yes, we were obsessed Pippin. with her and Pippin. Okay. Uh, but, but we were obsessed with her long before that. Rachel was in the national tour before it came to Broadway of A Christmas Story, and she played the mother in it, and we fell in love with her. 
and we tried to get her to be in every project that we've worked on since. It's true, yeah. <laughs> she what has turned love, us down, but thank you. What do you love about working with Rachel? She's, she's, an incre and she's an incredible person, she's an incredible actress, she's an incredible singer. <laughs> Just all around, and 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 she brings such humanity to like you can write something, and she imbues it with such gorgeous, authentic humanity, and like and she just elevates material in a way that is is I don't know incredible as a yeah. songwriter. Yeah, and she's giving you like it's always text forward, lyrics first, story first, and then she just like sprinkles on the incredible vocals, the singular vocals that are like folky, earthy. Uh, warm, warm bath like, uh, and and it's it's perfect. She's perfect. So we should have had him backstage for this part. This <laughs> so Rachel, I'm going to guess that you first heard about Dear Evan Hansen from these guys, then, right? Um, no, it was one of those like invitations. You get these invitations from your reps, like you've been offered this opportunity to do a, an untitled Pasek Paul Levinson musical a reading of it, okay. um, which was just for these guys, I think, right? Guy, wasn't it just for you? Yeah, and, but, and, but it, sorry, it yeah. was the first time, no, I was just saying it was the first time that we ever had actors read any part of the show. And Rachel was in it with Ben and Michael mm -hmm. Park and, and Jennifer Laura Thompson, the yeah. very first reading of very it first ever. Reading. And we showed up, we showed up in the room and it was, um, we weren't allowed to see the script. We didn't know what the hell it was. And, um, and then we just showed up in this rehearsal room with, there were scripts on music stands. And I think I, maybe it was me. I went to like a crack the book open to like get a <laughs> glance at what the fuck we were going to be reading and, and got like either a little smack on the wrist. No, 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 don't open the book yet. We're just, <laughs> so we, we had to op wait to open the the cover of the script to immediately start reading kind of cold and um it was amazing it's great it was amazing benj and justin was that your idea to to wait and not give them any information yeah guys. i think we were was just terrified we, oh, we, i don't think so we were i think it was a very protective move by michael greif by our producer to sort of like yeah. we were we were scared to death like and we didn't know like what this show was mm -hmm. if it made any sense um, if anyone would want to see it or be in it. And so I think we were very secretive or protective about it, not because of any other reason than just like potentially being embarrassed or ashamed or 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 just not knowing like what people would think of it. And it was like a it first was, draft was, ever on a story that was not based as an on actor anything. too, yeah. because you like you just you you open it and there's no time to have control issues over what you want to do. And you're just like reading it, reading it, reading it. And as an audience too, we're trying to figure out what's right. going to happen next, what all of it was. So I think it was probably a good way for them to get a sense of what spontaneously we, yeah. we, these characters were rather than this is what I think I'm going to do here. And now I'm going right. to do it in a very controlled way. So, so does that mean amazing. After, after the reading you knew, like that was the first time to hear it from beginning to end. Like, did you like, Oh wow, this is something. And were you no longer nervous? Yeah, I think we, say no, say no, say no. <laughs> you know that I, I had no idea that it, I was like, ah, no, <laughs> no, I'm totally kidding. It was, so good. it was so good. I worshiped these two for so long. I mean, completely madly in love with them for so long that um, I was, I was like a kid in a candy shop, you know, it's just, so good. I mean, it was completely different than what we ended up with, but a lot of the core things were the same and there were things that stayed and, but it was just so interesting and different and the music was so good and the way these three write together and wrote together, Stephen Levinson, the book writer, like, I mean, it was, it was perfection in that way. And that was Who really did the exciting. songs in that reading? Didn't Ben learn a song, or did you guys do most of the songs? What was it? I'm confusing ben, it with later. Ben, yeah, Ben learned ben a couple, learned of, a couple songs, of songs, and then I think we like sang through the rest of it. But just like just to say out loud, like the 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 fact of having people like Rachel from day one like develop a script with you, like and they're like an actor getting to really make it you know develop a character in tandem with the writing process like it, it's something that's really rare to get to have that experience and it, it was just we felt so lucky because we got to really like make 
you know, make a person together. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like a, like yeah. a giving birth in a way. That's why I always talk about, it. I just think it's so ludicrous that people get nominated for revivals. Because they just feel like revival, you're taking a role that's completely formatted <laughs> and putting a spin on it. But someone that creates a role literally creates it with the people that created it. It's like, how can your role be up against like Mama Rose? Like it's already been created. Oh, you. It makes me crazy. That's interesting. Yeah. Go <laughs> weigh in on a controversy. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this directed at? Is this just like you're do we get to weigh well, in? Like, no, I, I, I'm, with, I'm with the idea that they are of two, they are of two categories. You know, one is like someone giving th this new interesting interpretation of a classic role, and that's right. an amazing, mm -hmm. interesting thing category. Right. And yeah. then there is like what we're talking about, which was, I mean, we hand in hand, and I really truly mean it, hand in hand, developed this role with Rachel for right. four years, you know, and and um, and or however many years it was, I think some three, four, two, whatever, and and. I mean, we would have deep, long sessions of back and forth of, is this what Heidi would say? Is that what Heidi would say? What if we tried wow. this? I mean, really, really forming it together. And it was such a painstaking experience and the most uh, the most beautiful and rewarding one we could have ever imagined. Uh, my sister has a request about that reading. She just commented, I want a bootleg of that reading <laughs> ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, James, will you do me a favor? We've okay. got, Rachel, before you go, we got a list of donations that we want you to read. Okay, hold Can on. you copy, paste them, and send oh, them to Rachel? Do you have your phone with you, Rachel? We're going to text yeah. you a list of donations. All right, hold okay, on. good. Were they emailed to me? Yeah, they were emailed. Oh, right. Hold on. Because my I'm literally still on AOL, and it takes so long. <laughs> <laughs> it takes so oh, long to get God. in. By the way, why is Gmail so amazing? I don't know why I was like, Gmail is amazing. Based on I why? I have a great, but... What's the difference? I mean, oh, I just got. Oh, hold on, I can send them to Rachel right now. Really? Yes, really. All right, Rachel B A Y. Yes, I'm aware. I'm aware. G A O N. Oh, okay. so guys, you go to you go to Stars in the House. You donate, then you take that receipt and you forward it to Stars in the House 2020 gmail.com. <clears throat> okay, hit it. All right, I just it just sent Rachel. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay, Rachel. Okay, here we go. Sarah from California, $103. Nicole from Florida, $10. And I guess Nicole's saying, love all their music and these incredibly talented artists. Thank you, Nicole. Oh. Uh, Martha and Julie from California, $500. Is this huh? Martha and Julie. Thank you for all you're doing every single day to keep theater alive for all of us out oh, here. Wow. We love you. Martha love you, we love you, Martha. We love you, Martha. Love you, Martha. Martha and Julie. Mark from Massachusetts, fifty-one dollars. Thanks, Mark. Linda me. from Maryland, fifty-one dollars. Love you all. Oh, <laughs> that's so, so nice. nice. Oh, very Thank sweet. You guys. That's pretty great. Um, okay, so we have a million more people to bring on. Rachel, yes. you're going to come back. I want to do a whole show with you. Peace out. Bring that backdrop again. Oh yes. And say goodbye. Yeah. To you. <laughs> we love you, Mama. Right. I love you. Bye. I love you guys. Love you. All bye. right. Bye. Bye, hon. Bye. Now, um, contractually, we're obligated to bring on this person. <laughs> <laughs> Seth, why is James' lighting look so good and yours look so red? I maybe because. <laughs> Anywho, um, guys, you bring her back on right <laughs> now. <laughs> I mean, Lindsay, you were so great last night. So I'm so curious when you were doing when you, if people don't know, all rise did like an episode that was all kind of Zoom. Were you guys? We, did you do literally everything yourself or were you able to film stuff with the other people? We literally, I, I mean, we shot like the group scenes, we shot in a group on a, oh. a platform. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because I was like, wow, like that's a lot of reacting to nothing. Oh, that's no, great. No, no, not to, but the problem was there was like always a delay. So they'd be like, pick up the pace. And we're like, I'm not hearing any, you know what I mean? Right. So it, it was really, really worked. a fascinating yeah. exercise. It really worked. Like I was really invested in like what was going to happen with the brothers. Like we were watching the whole time, being like, "Is this concept going to work?" But I thought I thought it was great. What did you think of the final product? I was really proud of it. You know, when they told us they wanted to do it, we were all like, uh, "But I mean, it." I thought it really turned out to be something unique and yeah, and like a real kind of reflection of what we're all going through right now. Yeah. So great. yeah, yeah. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. It looks like the setup for the next season. Uh, quite, well, frank, quite frankly, someone's got a job. Okay. So by the way, we have one of your best friends on our show last night, Mr. Joe Montello. Oh, I know. 
who sassed me just like you sassed me. That's right. I asked him to sass you. It worked. <laughs> Please talk about how you guys hooked up because I want to take responsibility for it indirectly. It's really all you're doing. In my own way. I was on your show and he saw me. Oh. For our passing for our show. Godspell. Yeah. Because you had, brought me into these guys. Because you auditioned for Dogfight in the first place, right? I did, but not in front of any of them. <laughs> wow. So the so the casting people right, were you guys weren't there. Were you there when I auditioned the first time? I don't think so. They, clearly, I mean, it wasn't memorable. I can say that. <laughs> so so yeah. was like, you know, and then so Joe then saw you and was like, "You are right for Dogfight." So do you remember her auditioning when Joe brought her in? Oh, oh, definitely. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, then it was like a whole like process and I went in a few times and I went, I read with Derek had already been cast and I read with Derek and it was a whole thing, but I, I really didn't, I knew Benj and Justin from like the scene, but we had never <laughs> worked together before. And then they changed my life with, with wow. this show. And she changed, she changed really. stars. I mean, it, she, like she, she, she's incredible. Did you guys adjust anything in the writing of the show for Lindsay? Like now that Lindsay was in it, we need to blah, blah, blah. We should add this, add that. Yeah. I mean, we, I, I remember we, um, you know, when she came in, we were still doing like a reading of it. And, and I remember we adjusted material. Then we wrote new songs, you know, and get again, like getting to have an actor that you can put a song, you know, like they write a song in, in that, in, in your mind for that actor can make all the difference. And like, when we were like writing things with Lindsay in mind and it, yeah, I, I don't know. Her, her act two song before it's over. Like, I feel like we wrote it in the room with her, like one, it feels like one line at a time. We, we, were like writing, one line yeah. right? we, we were, we were, we were writing a new song. And then during the we song. kept changing that. Yeah. Too. But really yeah. like we'd be up in the rehearsal room in second stage, <laughs> one line, like, an awkward world with her guitar, like one line at a time. And she'd be like, that feels good. Like re truly that back and forth, that collaboration. Did you, yeah. Always, yeah. did you always want the ending to have that sort of happy, happy spin? Or was it going to just end devastatingly at one point? Well, you know, it, in, in terms of like the show itself, you mean? Well, like in terms of it being like, it was a horrible experience, but like, I, it's basically like the end of season. Oh. You know, season she sings, yeah. like, I, he broke up with me, but I'm way ahead because I learned how to love. Like, did you always want to have that sort of uplifting message at the end? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's based on a, a little known film from 1992, this Nancy Savaka film. And so that is what happens in the actual course of the events. But getting to musicalize that and getting to understand the character psyche of like, that she's not going back to the sky because she's desperate. She's going back because she wants to claim her own sort of value. And it was a big part of what we talked about in, in writing that song in particular and like Lindsay's arc as Rose in the show. I basically, I was playing on the radio the other day and I compared it to this, but it's like, we're going through something like her horrible dogfight date, but at the end of it, maybe we'll all learn mm. something and come out for the better. I literally was comparing, mm. that's what I feel. It's like, this is horrible, but maybe good will come out of it. Mm. Uh, this is a good song yeah. with notes. Um, <laughs> nobody. All right, so Lynn, what do you think? By the way, your background is much more pleasant than the last background you gave us on the first show. Remember, it was like no, no posters. What was? The, how come you moved? I just was trying to give you some dimension today, Seth. I, oh, I don't know. Right. Like I'm on the show every week. <laughs> I only have so many walls. I don't know what to do. Like after a while, it's like I've seen things. Same, I can name every book in your freaking shelf. Like you know, it's like change it up. <laughs> She's got a point. So you know, I'm really speechless because I'm like, you know what? Namaste. Yeah, totally you're like, you're right. Namaste. I'm gonna do some, yeah, do some location uh, show yeah. searching. Hundred yeah. percent. All right. Your so guys' cool. backgrounds are in, in fuego, though. Ben, Justin. Thank you. You're giving me Thank dimension. You. You're giving me lighting. You're not gonna write to another show, you ass kisser. Anyway, <laughs> what are you planning on? <laughs> Cat fight starring Lindsay Mitnick. <laughs> Way. What are you there you get? go. What are you gonna get? By the way, do I want to keep promoting your book? I just want people to. I want to make sure people are getting this book because they can get it on Amazon or wherever books are found. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Lynn, what are you gonna haul out for us tonight? <laughs> Literally, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna haul out uh, a song from Dogfight that uh, is, I think. Probably Benj and Justin's most famous song from that show, would you guys say? Um, I, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a very um, 
beautiful moment in the show, sad, sad moment in the show, um, when uh, Rose comes back from the party after finding out that um, mm. that Eddie has uh, lied to her and that she was at a dog fight to be the ugliest girl at the party after she thinks she was on a date. So we're gonna really lift the people up. Thank you. <laughs> oh, if you love this song, you should, starts in the house .com and then right. forward that receipt. Lizzie's smiling at her off Broadway smack. Okay. Close the window, draw the curtain. Hide the bright light of the moon. Hang the dresses, ugly dresses. No one likes maroon. Let's see what I did there. Wipe off all that. Stupid lipstick. Return the earrings to their case. Makeup won't make any difference. Still the same old face. Isn't it funny? Find one if you try. You went dancing, you were dancing. You were dancing with a guy. Isn't it funny? Isn't it? find some good well you misunderstood or you've been dreaming cause people are just cruel Shut the light off, turn the bed down. No more crying, don't you dare. You'll wake up sometime tomorrow and forget to even care. Isn't it funny? Thank you. 
Lindsay. So beautiful. The voice, the acting, it's so like good. I can't, how are you emoting like that? Like on a Tuesday right now? I, I don't know, cause I'm completely dead inside. So <laughs> I'm not really sure. <laughs> so that was good. amazing. So, so Lindsay, I want to just plug for you, but I don't even know if you're interested, but are you still like coaching? Cause you're such a great actress. Are you doing your-, your You better be, you better be. Oh yeah, I'm, I teach, um, my actor therapy classes are still ongoing online. So how do people find it? What do they look up? Just actor Therapy NYC. Julie Wesley. At, yeah, we're gonna we, Julie wants you to take it. ActorTherapyNYC.com. Yeah. 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 So good. No, right? it's so, that song is like so easy to to fall into. It's gorgeous. It's just the best piece. And awesome. okay. So that's called you an amazing actor. But sure. <laughs> I mean it's like you're literally just like sitting on your couch, like, okay, hit it. <laughs> <What's a nice laughs> I know. I know, but the nice thing about like getting to play the role is you you go back to the mm. moment and and you can as soon as the music starts, I can like mm. feel in my body where I was in that right. time. So it's quite easy to kind of just land back. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, you're amazing, and the song is stunning and devastating. Devastating. And you wrote the lyrics to that. Yeah, and Justin and I wrote it, and and we obviously with Peter Dushan, who's our book writer, and we we kind of figured out the moment together, and obviously the amazing Joe Mantello guided us the whole way through as our director. But I guess my point is like being like gay in high school, like was it something that you like? You no, know I'm saying like was it's, it's, your life? It's a thousand. It's a thousand percent a gay in high school kind of song. Yeah, okay. yeah. And I went to high school like three years before you, so even in my time, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was gonna say, Seth, were you around when the Actors Fund was founded? I was gonna ask. <laughs> I couldn't remember. <laughs> I couldn't remember. All right, um, Lynn's great seeing you. We're gonna see you next week. I expect a totally different. <laughs> Another background. Sorry. <laughs> Bye, Lindsay. Bye, right, Lindsay. We love you. We'll, we'll text you Thank later. You. We have an idea for you too. You. All right. In conclusion, speaking of someone that is constantly on our show, who we love so much, oh. please welcome to the stage, Carol Settle. Oh! Woo! <laughs> I love, I love, baby. <laughs> hey, all of our friends are in LA. Like you, Rachel, Lindsay, what's happening, man? It's, uh, I don't know. It's, um, and I moved from LA County. So, cause that kind of got a little bit too intense. So I had to get up out of there. Mm. So I could do, so I could keep doing what I want to do. Yeah, but it was cool. It's it's good to be here. Hi, you guys. Hi, we love you, Kayla. I love you guys so bad. How are you doing? <laughs> During the disaster. It's crazy, I mean, but it's, it's so this, crazy. This is this is so nice. I gotta say to like be able to like reconnect with so many of our friends and you know kind of re relive a lot of these memories of writing mm -hmm. songs and developing them with people and. I don't know. It's, it's been this has been a really good hour, at least, <laughs> and I'm so happy that you're yeah. here. Hey, Benj and Justin, how did you how did you bring KL on board? It wasn't supposed to be me, first of all. <laughs> it was oh, always it, gonna it be. It was you. always supposed to be her. No. I mean, no, but look, I mean, like she. The, if anyone ever earned, owned, and just claimed a role, it was KL. We were doing a, a workshop uh, in New York of The Greatest Showman the film and using all of our Broadway friends as part of the workshop. And Kayala was playing the bearded lady and she was doing her like Kayala thing of like, I don't really want to like just being like far too humble, far too well, like, in the background. <laughs> like she's, I, you know, I, I don't want to whatever. We're like, hey, come on, this is a big song, like sing this moment. And she's like, I don't know if I should. And and she, and we, and the director talked to her and was like, Michael Grace, the director and said like, in this moment, this is gonna sell the movie to the film execs. So this has to be so powerful. Like move your move your music stand and just stand there and deliver the song. And the moment but, of this is me came along and it was something far beyond any of that. But wait a minute, you're talking about that video, the one that went viral, the one that one? 
that, that's that exact moment. And, and wow. right after that moment, um, one of the heads of the studio came up to Kayala. Is this true? I think it is. And they we said tell to you, the like, story like it is. we tell the story all the time that it's true. But like that, that one of the studio execs came up to you and was like, you just booked your first major motion. He picture. did say that, but I wasn't listening because I was shaking. <laughs> I was so scared. I was so scared. So scared. I was really, really not paying attention at all. I was basically going through a therapy session that now millions upon billions of people <laughs> have seen across the globe. Uh, yeah, because I, I, Hugh heard it and he keeps saying it and I'm like, whatever. Uh, but but it's, also, it's also one of those things where somebody says it and you and you're like, okay, sure. That's what you're going to say from right. exact man in the moment. Let's see if I right. like, right. I won't wait and, for the call. Absolutely. And because, you know, fortunately, because not for nothing before all this happened, when we were able to be together and work out all the songs that you guys were putting together, that was and remains to this day heaven. I mean, I'm still singing the old opening number. Like, can you believe it's a spectacular menagerie? Shiny in the crowd, ah, you heard it now. This is a great show. Favorite. I mean, we everybody that they had brought together for that reading both times that we were able to do it it just it was oh, unfortunately they were able to bring for the most part the same people back and we just it was it's just we had such a blast making that music because it felt right and it felt good and it was we were telling all these amazing stories and then they would go fix this and then fix that and then they came back with this song that nobody ever heard of called this is me and i'm like that's cute who's singing that and then cute. They're like, well, you're singing. And I said, yes, I'm singing the soprano part. <gasps> well, who's singing the lead? Idiots. Because I'll stand behind them. That didn't happen. It never happened. Kay, you've now sung it. You know, it's become one of those things. Because I remember when you got, I remember you got the movie. Because I, I remember I, I came to see Waitress, like, right when you got it. Mm. So you, you've sung it now so many times. Like, what's the most memorable time? Because you're saying, like, around the world. Like, what's the time? Yeah. That, like, what's the most, like, oh, my God, this is the most amazing night? Actually, I, and I'm embarrassed, there were two moments, but I'll talk about the most recent one. Um, I'm embarrassed to say it because I, it's hard because as, unfortunately, because Lindsay, she's so incredible and she can jump in and out of these characters, like, just like, like, like cutting butter with a butter knife. It's just seamless. And I'm singing the song and can't ever leave this <laughs> position because the way that these two have written this song ironically enough, is my life, and I continue to fight it. We're on year five, people, year <laughs> five. So I'm still living with it um, and what that means for me and what that means for other people and what it means when I sing it for other people. And the one time recently that I saw and I felt it and it kind of just rocked me to, to my core was when uh, we went to Mexico City. Went to Mexico City. Everybody was on, you know, oxygen masks because it's very high altitude, and and all I do is just sing one song, and everybody else is like dancing their faces off along with Huey. They're all like singing, dancing, hitting the oxygen tank, and then going back out. And and I went and I see um, the the city of Mexico City, and I realize um, where they are financially and how impoverished they are as a nation. And it crushed me. And yet when we went into the arena, both of those nights, it was packed. And the second of the downbeat, when that show started, it was so piercing, the screams. Mm -hmm. And you knew that these tickets weren't $25. You knew they weren't $25 a pop. And everybody showed up and sang almost every song that they knew. And so that by the time I got up to sing this is me, I learned how to say, sing with me uh, in Spanish. And I oh, asked them to sing it with me, but they sang it in English and not in Spanish. And they screamed it and I wept. I just, that's when I realized uh, what an impact uh, a song can be or, or make, especially, uh, especially the song. 
it, it was, it shook me to my core, shook me to my core. Do you love like having a signature song now? Uh, I would. Here's the deal. Tell this one. Tell this no, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Because like I just said, if it didn't, <laughs> if it wasn't something that was, because here's the deal. When it's like someone reading you forever. Mm. That's what this song is to me. So every time I sing it or hear it, I'm I'm getting read. Like exposed, you mean? Completely exposed, completely. And every time that happens, I have to go right back to where, because I got therapy, yay! Um, I have to go back to what my therapist taught me on what that means and what it doesn't mean and what I thought it meant but doesn't. Do you know what I mean? I kind of live my life according to that. So the fact that I do get the privilege, because it is, I'm just going to tell you right now, it is an effing privilege to sing this song. I said effing. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a privilege to sing this song whenever I get asked to do it, no matter what, no matter where, every single time. I'm not joking. And it's not just because I get to do it for other people and I watch them and hear them and read about what has happened to their life or their life since they've heard it. But that alters me. And c- clearly, I continually need to be altered. And if that's the case, then so be it. So be it. Beautiful. You guys, you created like a, uh, an anthem. It's a big de- Well, actually, you created a lot of anthems. Including- oh, they created a ton of anthems. A ton. Including, <laughs> <laughs> including you will be found. Yes, queen. Mm. Um, oh I think, hey, everyone's clamoring. What are you going to give us? Duh. <laughs> Duh. I got this, guys. I got this. I got this. God, I can't believe you guys are here. I love you. You guys, I am always scared to sing this song. Always. You got this. You got this, babe. Always. And I've been, year five. <laughs> Freaking year five. I love you. You know that, right? I am not a stranger to the dark. Hide away, they say, because we don't want your broken parts. I've learned to be ashamed of all my scars. Run away, they say, no one will love you as you are. But won't let them break me down to dust I know that there's a place for us For we are glorious When the sharpest words wanna cut me down I'm gonna send a flood when I drown around I am brave, I am bruised I am who I'm meant to be this is me, oh God, cause here I come. And I'm marching on to the beat I drum. I'm not scared to be seen. I make no apologies. This is me. Come on, sing. Justin, slam those keys. Slam the keys. Hit the head, go. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, another round of bullets hits my skin. Well, fire away, cause today I won't let the shame sink in. We are bursting through the barricade and reaching for the sun. Yeah, that's what we become. Won't let them break me down to dust. I know that there's a place for us. Oh, we are glorious when the sharpest words want to cut me down. I'm going to send the flood, going to drown the bow. I am brave, I am bruised, I am who I'm meant to be. This is me. Look out, because here I come. Hey, and I'm marching on to the beat I drum. I'm not scared to be seen. I make no apologies. This 
what you will continually do throughout these times, you have to know you're saving people. Saving people, not just here, not just in New York City, not just in the States. This crap is worldwide and you're nailing it. Every single one of you in every platform, what you're doing, you're nailing it. You're nailing it. Thank you. And I want to say, no, you guys oh, are- yeah, you're nailing it too. Oh. You're nailing it too. Cut. I want to say this, this song has an effect on so many people. Look at this, just one of the one of the comments. This means my absolute favorite. I work with a production company of special needs adults called Front Row Players. This has become their anthem. It makes me cry every time. I mean, it's this has like has effects like you have no idea where it has effect. You, you I mean, you really, really don't. You right. really, really don't. It's it it hits, and you and just when you think that it can't touch any more people, uh -huh. you're wrong. It it just continually. I, I still get messages from people going, I have no idea where this song came from. I heard it on Spotify playlist or I heard it in the grocery store mm -hmm. and I had to Shazam it or whatever. And these yeah. people call, or they text me and they, or not text me, they don't come to me like that at all. They get on social media, right. wow. <laughs> and uh, they ask you know, so kind and saying, I didn't know who you were. And, saying sorry and i'm going um it's cool you're real real nice thanks so much it's look look at this to look prove at this, your Kayla. point Kayla. this is the first uh, time i've ever heard this song oh becca thank you i didn't write it <laughs> I was on the show no it's all you it's you, it's, you, it's, you, it's you it's your authenticity it's your story your voice that's what made this moment in that workshop at the at, at, all those years ago and it's what makes it in the movie and it's what makes it every single time that you sing it it's you it's you mm -hmm. it's your authenticity your obedience to this calling of of sharing your voice your story and your high notes come on man come on. <laughs> and your high notes. be come honest on. and by the way carol you're right about the worldwideness people watching you everywhere watching this from singapore mm. what time is it there does Dr. LaPook know? I don't get back to me. <laughs> <laughs> the hell? When we were once upon a time in Singapore together. Remember that? I do. On one of our many cruises. Uh, Lindsay, Lindsay. Oh, you were on a cruise, Lindsay? Oh, that's fun. With these two. <gasps> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shit. And I'm not know the show's <laughs> over. <laughs> That'll be another show where I tell all Where's the leave? Studio button. <laughs> <laughs> why, why one eye? <laughs> why okay. one eye? You think this is where we roll the credits? Yes, we'll roll the credits. Oh my and, God. Um, and I'm going to play Lindsay's theme song during the credits. Hit it. Go. Yes. Um, <laughs> Did you do this on the cruise? 
Paul, get the book. You will be found. Cal said you're amazing. Lindsay, still got it. Richard B. Jones, Jeremy Jordan. 